guys, welcome back to Sissy Spaces. And if you're new, welcome. In today's video, I'm sharing some of my deep cleaning tips and routines while I deep clean the guest room, gym, half bath, catwalk, and double staircase. We're also doing a little bit of organizing and decorating while continuing with our April spring cleaning schedule. And for today's laundry motivation, I have a load of darks to wash, dry, and fold. And as you can see, we're getting it started first before beginning our deep cleaning journey. So if you enjoy this type of content, continue watching. And if you're new to my channel, at the end of the video, please remember to hit that like subscribe button and share this channel with your family and friends. And if you've already subscribed, thank you for being here and I appreciate your support. One of the best decisions I've made so far this year was discontinuing the use of the Gain Laundry Pods. Don't get me wrong, they were very convenient, but left a lot of plastic residue on our clothes. So I switched back to the Gain Powdered Detergent, which is messy, but it works. The other laundry products that I routinely use are the Gain Moonlight Breeze Scented Firework Beads, Dryer Sheets, White Distilled Vinegar in the Place of Fabric Softener, and I use Borax as a deodorizer. I actually started deep cleaning the guest room last night, removing everything from the closet, decluttering and donating items no longer needed. Hubby and I have old friends visiting from out of town, so today's goal is to get the guest room deep cleaned first before cleaning the other rooms and spaces within our home. So today, I want to finish cleaning the closet and replace the remaining items before deep cleaning the rest of the room. Quick storage tip. To save space, I'm also hanging some of my boys' book bags, school memorabilia, and cap and gowns, which will negate the use of a storage container, because we all know storage containers take up a lot of space. After that, we'll deep clean the windows and the remaining surfaces of the room before decorating the dresser. The closet is done, so we're now moving the bed in order to deep clean the windows. The bed used to be on the gallery wall side of the room, but I switched it up a few years ago and placed it in front of these windows to allow our guests a direct view of the TV. It is painful moving the bed every time I need to get to the windows, but I only clean the windows and blinds once or twice per year, so the pain doesn't last very long. This room gets a lot of sun in the afternoons because it's located on the west side of our home, so I want to deep clean the windows first before deep cleaning the rest of the room. Also, according to the Weather Channel, we're supposed to get a lot of rain in a few hours, so I need to move quickly. By the way, I'm not using any special equipment or cleaning products to clean these windows, as it's not needed. I'm using Dawn Dish Detergent mixed in water, two microfiber cloths, one wet and one dry, a scrub brush to scrape the dirt out of the window casing, and a vacuum to remove the dirt. In place of the scrubber, you can use a sponge or an old toothbrush, which will work just fine. And you can also add vinegar to your soapy water solution, but in my opinion, it's not needed. By the way, if you're wondering if your windows open up like mine to clean behind them, check to see if you have tilt sashes on either side of the locking mechanism. And if so, slide the tilt latches inward while slowly tilting the window towards you. You can also lower the top window to allow fresh air in, but I no longer do this because I forget to close them. In my opinion, the quickest and easiest way to clean your windows is by wiping them down first with a damp microfiber cloth. Then use a dry microfiber cloth to remove any excess water and do the same on the opposite side of the bottom window. After that, clean the bottom window casing by scrubbing the dirt to loosen it up for easy removal. Then wiping the casing clean with the same damp microfiber cloth used to clean the window itself. It took me less than 15 minutes to clean all three of these windows, and they are 72 inches in height and 36 inches in width. Also, a word of caution when cleaning your windows. Some of the things I've done in the past that I'm not proud of are bending the window screens, breaking the tilt sashes, and leaving the top window open for extended periods of time. 
So as you can see here, I'm moving slowly as I clean, taking time not to cause any more damage to the rest of the windows within our home. I'm also cleaning each window pane thoroughly to ensure it's done right the first time. I'm not cleaning the exterior of the top windows, but I have done this before. After bending several screens, I now leave it up to hubby because window screens are expensive. Another tip when cleaning your windows is to be sure to clean the window gasket, also known as a window seal or seal gasket. This piece of rubber is fitted into your window frame to prevent entrance of drafts and water into your home. They're replaceable and they should last between 10 to 20 years if installed correctly. Also, temperature changes can cause the window seal to expand and contract, breaking them down over time. As such, it's a good idea to inspect your seals regularly for any tears and get them replaced as needed. The windows are done and we can now replace and make the bed. I washed the sheets last night so they would be ready to go today, which saved me a lot of time. I also washed the waffle weave coverlet, but didn't wash the duvet cover because I washed it last month. A quick tip for a soft and comfortable bed is to add a duvet insert on top of the mattress itself. Whenever I have guests, they always ask about the mattress, which is a standard mattress by the way. The comfort actually comes from the thick duvet insert that I've placed directly over the mattress and then I top it with a fitted sheet. This is a queen size duvet and duvet insert which leaves a nice overhang on both sides of the bed. By sizing up your duvet, it ensures plenty of cover for everyone. This also means that there's no risk of your guests waking up in the middle of the night because they've been left out in the cold. So you can guarantee that they'll get a good night's sleep. This is the gallery wall I mentioned earlier. I decided to make this a gallery wall of family photos because it's a reflection of the people I love. Also, a gallery wall is a great way to add a focal point, color, and interest to your room and it draws the eye of the guests to look closer, which is always an excellent talking point. Although not shown here, I did dust the dresser with the Swifter Duster prior to using the Pledge Furniture Polish, and I also wiped down the drawers in front of the dresser as well. These are me and hubby's diplomas, which I love displaying because we both managed to graduate college while working full time and raising our boys. We also worked two jobs at times in order to ensure we graduated without any college debt, which was very important to us. And we worked very hard to ensure our boys graduate college without any debt as well. There were a lot of long nights and stress, but getting and staying out of debt was a serious motivator. After returning this lamp, we're going to start decorating the dresser. I really wanted to purchase some new items for this dresser, but we weren't able to fit it in April's budget. I have asked for the same decor for Mother's Day and once received, I'll definitely show it to you guys. So to stay on budget today, we're using the same decor used last month, which hopes to change it up in the month of May. room would not be complete without returning my youngest son's builder bear back on the bed. After a quick vacuum, we need to check on the laundry. I heard the jingle earlier, so that means our load of darks are ready to go in the dryer. I figured since I already had the vacuum out, I might as well vacuum the catwalk. My oldest son ran the iRobot earlier, but it mostly stayed in his room, and this catwalk was pretty dirty, as well as the double staircase, which is on my list of spaces to deep clean today. But first, let's get this laundry in the dryer and prep the washer for tomorrow. Today's load consisted of some new jeans my husband recently purchased, to 
to replace ones that were really worn down. A quick tip to keep your home clutter free is to replace items no longer needed and dispose or donate those unwanted items. Hubby and I are not minimalist by any means, but we also like to maintain a clutter-free home. Some other tips we use to maintain a clutter-free home is we store things where we use them. We have a place for everything and we purge often. When I say purge, I mean whenever I tackle clutter, I ask myself two questions. Do I love it and does it serve a purpose? If the answer is no to both of these questions, I immediately donate or dispose of it. In my opinion, this method of decluttering works every time. This is a double staircase, so in the interest of time, my plan is to clean this top portion first, which includes the landing, and then the bottom portion later this evening. Again, according to the weather, it's supposed to rain today, so I want to clean the windows in the gym slash hobby room before that happens. After returning this vacuum, we're going to grab a fresh microfiber cloth and a mixture of Dawn dish detergent and water in order to clean the windows in the gym slash hobby room. As always, I return things to their designated space. And because of this, including some other things, is why I'm able to maintain a clean and tidy home. After dusting these blinds, I want to open them up to gain access to the window. And as I was doing this, I noticed the weeds growing in the fire pit, as well as between the rocks on the patio. I do plan to clean and do weed the patio in the coming weeks and have the boys pull the weeds from the garden beds in the front. The builder of this home really believed in symmetry because the windows on the second floor are of the same size and shape as those below it. Also, the last time we cleaned the exterior of this window, we reinstalled the screen upside down. Anyway, I do love having all these large windows, which bring in a lot of natural light but not so much when I have to clean up. I noticed as I was vacuuming this window that it would slide down intermittently. And this happens because one or both of the balances of the window have become detached from the sash or the balances are still connected but aren't functioning properly. So I asked Hubba to check it out later. I can see the clouds moving in, so it's a good thing I'm on my last window for the day. If it does rain before I finish, I'll continue unless it becomes windy as well. These windows are somewhat protected from receiving a lot of rain because our roof has a small overhang, which reduces the amount of rain hitting these windows. That's if it's not windy, of course. By the way, how's the weather in your area? It was pretty windy and rainy over the past few days here, but we also received a lot of sun. We lost power a few times this week, but it returned within two to three hours. I was worried that I wouldn't get these voiceovers done in time because we lost access to our internet as well. I wanna spend some time cleaning this Bowflex I quickly wiped it down a month ago, but I didn't pay special attention to the bottom bars or the floor mat. Once done, we'll dispose of the dirty water and then dust his closet, which I also call the hobby or memorabilia closet because of what it contains. As you can see, that water was much dirtier this time as opposed to the first batch from cleaning the windows in the guest room. And I think it's because we also wiped down the Bowflex in this room, which was really dirty and dusty. I'm being really careful dusting his Hot Wheel collection. My family really believes in respecting each other's scenes. So I wanna make sure I don't damage or misplace any of his items, as he also does when it comes to any of my items.
I did hear the jingle on the dryer, but I want to finish cleaning this desk and chair before unloading the dryer itself. I also decided to finish cleaning this entire room before folding and putting away the laundry. If you haven't realized it by now, I really like finishing a room before moving on to another task because I may not return to finish that room later. <laughs> similar to how I did a job before I retired. I was always applauded by my bosses for doing a great job, but some also complained because it took me longer to complete that job. My motto has always been, do it right the first time so you don't have to waste time doing it again later. As I mentioned earlier, my plan is to empty the dryer but fold and put away the clothes later. So let's return to the gym and use the Swifter Dry Sweeper to clean these floors. And once done, fold and put away our one load of laundry. While doing voiceovers, this is the point in the video where we lost power and access to the internet. I received a text from the power company with a return of power within three hours. I also received a text from our internet company stating the same. So believe it or not, I spent those hours actually exercising. I know, I surprised myself too. After exercising, the family and I played board games such as Jenga and Scattergories. We continued to play board games even hours after the power returned. It was so much fun, but what wasn't fun was our oven didn't work after the power returned. I tried resetting it back to factory settings without any luck. It's a good thing we purchased an extended warranty last year due to a problem with the control panel, so it seems we may be without an oven for a few weeks. Thank goodness the other appliances are not a problem. Most of these items are t-shirts and jeans, so it's not going to take long folding and putting them away. Also, since these jeans were new, I made sure to wash them in cold water to prevent shrinkage or fading. I removed the jeans while they were still damp, opting for half a drying cycle versus a full amount of time. Quick tip, it's recommended to use a mild detergent whenever you wash your denims or darks. The Gain Original is considered to be a mild detergent, and it's still effective at killing microbiological agents and germs. I still want to clean the half bath today and finish cleaning the stairs. So let's quickly store these items away and hang these jeans. There are several ways to store your jeans, but I like hanging them, matching the inner leg seams of the pants, and then folding them in half over the hanger with the waist and legs towards the ground. In my opinion, hanging or folding your jeans is up to you. It just depends on the amount of drawer space and vertical hanging space in your closet. It's now time to clean this half bath. There is another bathroom on this main floor, but it's located in me and hubby's bedroom, which leave guests to use this half bath instead while downstairs. To get started, I want to remove what I can and dust first before using any cleaning products. As always, I'm cleaning from the top down, ensuring to remove all the spray away glass cleaner. I then wipe the surface for a second time, including the outer frame of the mirror. After cleaning the sink, I'm going to use the same microfiber cloth to dry the top of the sink, clean the bottom of the sink, while also wiping down the wall art and moldings. This is just one way I extend the life of my cleaning products. I'm not afraid to use the spray away foaming glass cleaner on my porcelain sink, wall art, or moldings because spray away glass cleaner dries quickly and by using it on multiple surfaces you can get more bang for your buck. But as you can see I'm not spraying the product directly on the sink, wall art, or moldings, only using what was already on the microfiber cloth.
I also like using the non-bleach Clorox wipes on the sink, but especially like using these Clorox wipes on the toilet versus a microfiber cloth. And I remember to wear gloves as I continue to clean the toilet, as toilets are a breeding ground for bacteria. It's recommended that you deep clean your toilet every few days, but wipe the outside, handle, and seat at least once per day. In my opinion, it really depends on your household. If you live alone, you may not need to clean it as often than if you have kids. Also, remember the golden rule for cleaning toilet bowl stains. Use non-alkaline products only. I rarely use cleaning products to clean inside the toilet. And when I do, it's my vinegar mixture, which consists of non-dish detergent, water, and white distilled vinegar. I try to clean all of the toilet brush holders at least once per month and completely dry the toilet brush before replacing it back in the holder. You don't need any special cleaners to clean the toilet brush holders. A non-bleach Clorox wipe works just fine. I cleaned all the moldings within our home for the month of January, so it was nice to see the Swifter was not as dirty as I thought it would be. After filling this soap container, we'll replace the hand towel with a clean one, as well as a new trash bag. Then sweep the floors. I'm also going to mop these floors, but I plan to do that after cleaning the lower level of the double staircase. Replacing the Swifter dusters and sweeping cloths can get expensive over time, so I don't use them every day, but on a weekly basis. I tried placing a microfiber cloth over the sweeper, and after using it, I didn't like the idea of shaking the debris in the trash or outside and then washing the microfiber cloth. I was also concerned about what was ending up in my washing machine, so although the extra cost is there, I like the idea of just disposing of the sweeping cloths and dusters as needed. The lower level of these stairs was just as dirty as the upper level. I've tried many different methods to clean these stairs and using the Swifter dusters are by far the quickest, easiest, and most convenient way to get it done. I do mop these stairs but maybe once per month because by cleaning them as often as I do, mopping them frequently is not needed. While vacuuming, I remembered that I still needed to clean the lint trap. I routinely cleaned the dryer lint trap after removing the clothes, but I was so focused on sweeping the gym, I forgot. So once I'm done cleaning these lanterns and placing them on the stairs, we'll clean the lint trap, then mop the floors, as well as those in the half bath. As you can see, my fur baby Max is watching as usual. While I was upstairs cleaning, he was hanging out with Dad and the boys. So let's hurry up and finish for today so he and I can hang out on the couch and watch some of our favorite shows. As you can see, we're starting in the half bath. I would usually start by the stairs, but again, I want to finish cleaning this room before cleaning another, an old habit that's hard to break. If you made it this far in the video, I want to thank you for watching Sissy's Faces. 
And if you enjoyed today's video, please remember to hit that like subscribe button and share this channel with your family and friends. Again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.